Hi guys, welcome, and who that? I'm Joe, and today we are going to continue to examine the roster for our beloved Bless You Boys in Black and Gold, and this is a continuation of an examining the roster video, and in this video we are going to figure out how do the Saints rebuild their roster this off season. So in the last video, I pulled up the complete list of free agents for the saints and we examined the actual roster offense and defense for the saints. I'm going to pull up those charts real quick. So you can have a reference point in this video. These are the re unrestricted free agents, the restricted free agents and the exclusive rights free agents or the Saints this year. You can pause this video and take a look at that list. Like I said, we kept the list up in the previous video. We kept it up for a while and we went through each one and talked about it. And that's going to be your reference point there. We will be referring to these free agents quite a bit in this video. I won't have the complete list up, but it's there and you can pause it and look at it. And now... We're going to take a look at the whole offensive roster. Pull that up. These are the positions on offense and highlighted positions of need. We're going to talk about red, yellow, and green. All of them are necessary to look at, though. All right, that's your offense. And now here is your defense. And once again, positions of need highlighted in either red, yellow, or green. We kept these lists up in the last video for a long time and went through all of it. So now that's your reference point for this video. You can pause it and look at it if you want to. But we will be bringing up little stats and we we're, you'll, you'll be able to refer to it throughout the video. But that's the complete list. All right, now we're going to talk about positions of need. We're going to bring this up. And in my opinion, these are the positions that have to be addressed. Highlighted in either red, yellow, or green. All of it needs to be addressed in some way. In some of these, you'll see positions are listed more than once. And yeah, I'm going to explain that to you right now. So you've got your top level red alert we need offensive tackles we need an offensive guard we need a defensive end and we need a nickel cornerback i think that's the major needs for the team on the second level you'll see cornerback listed as well that is an outside cornerback not a nickel but someone on the outside and i've got that in yellow because we're not sure if we're going to trade Marshawn Lattimore or not. There's the question of the free agents with Isaac Yadam and stuff. Yadam. So that's why that's listed twice. Then you have defensive tackle and linebacker and wide receiver on that second level as well as linebacker, defensive tackle, wide receiver on the third level. And that's, like I said, there's different levels. So... The linebacker you're looking at in yellow is a starting Sam. And the wide receiver in yellow would be your starting X receiver. You know, whoever takes Michael Thomas's place. And I think the yellow defensive tackle should refer to a guy that can play the five tech or the nose or whatever you want to call that next to Brian Brissy. But you can also use <laughs> more depth at defensive interior line and so that's why defensive tackles listed in the bottom as well that would be you know an upgrade at defensive tackle regardless of position linebacker on the bottom tier instead of talking about a strong linebacker a sam linebacker on the outside starting we're just talking about depth at linebacker a good linebacker there so that's why different positions are mentioned twice and and we're going to go through all of this and what we're going to do is 
We're going to quickly touch on the draft. Just a quick overview of how the depth is at each position in the draft, but we're not going to talk about players in the draft. I'll be doing plenty of videos in this offseason, breaking down the different positions in the draft, where players are rated, which rounds they're supposed to go in, stuff like that. But in this video, it's kind of just a quick overview of the draft because we want to determine in this video whether we are going to address these positions of need for this roster in this offseason, if we, if we are going to address it through free agency, through re-signing our own players, or if we take a chance and go into the draft. So this is how this is going to work out. First, we're going to start at the bottom with the green highlighted positions. We'll start with safety. So we'll pull up the safeties on my side. That is green highlighted position of need. Your safeties on your roster, current roster right now, Tyron Matthew, Marcus May, Jordan Howden, JT Gray, Jonathan Abram. Not a bad haul. The free agents that we could resign from the Saints are indicated. That would be Lonnie Johnson Jr. and Ugo Amadi. Ugo Amadi can play cornerback or safety as well as Lonnie Johnson. So there's your free agent options we could resign. And then you have the draft grade at the bottom. I give the safety class this year a C. You can have a C plus, a C minus. That's how my grading system's going. This is just straight up C. And uh, in future videos, we will be breaking down draft, draft choices and the positions, but I'll just tell you right now, draft, dra draft grade of a C for safeties, you might have two of them that go in the top 50. You'll probably have six overall that go in the top 100. And you'll probably have 11 taken in the top 150 players taken. So I'll give you a quick overview that way, breaking down the grade. So I give the safeties a grade of C in the draft. You know, there's only two of them worth a top 50 pick. They can go anywhere from the first round to the top of the third round. But six of them should be taken before the top 100. Pick 100 comes right between the third round and fourth round. So when I talk about top 100 players, you're talking about top three rounds in the draft. So there'll probably be six safeties taken in the top 100 in the first three rounds. And then you've got 11 of them that'll probably be taken in the top 150. So, you know, that's your indication. That there's good depth at the safety position in the draft. None of them are really great to go and grab early, but you have a nice little consolidation of good picks that you can take. And uh, I would typically say third round, fourth round, fifth round, you can find decent safeties there. So that's how these little boxes are broken down. We look at the starters. We see who we have on our roster. We look at the free agents. Do we bring any of them back? And then we look at the draft grade. And you guys can determine what you, what you think. We address it in the draft or do we address it in free agency? The problem with safety is Matthew and May are older players. Matthew especially is probably going to retire after this contract, I'm assuming. And Marcus May, you know, after this contract is up, we're probably not going to resign him. So. You've really got two starting safeties on the roster now that are pretty good players. And you got really good depth with Jordan Howden and Jonathan Abram. And then you've got the special teams ace, JT Gray. So eventually Howden's going to take either Matthew or May's place. And I think Jonathan Abram is just a veteran presence that you need, that kind of a guy that can come in and play on the spot. We did pretty good in the secondary this year with a bunch of veteran backup defensive backs. 
And I think if we carry a bunch of them like that again this year, then we'll be fine. We don't have to address safety if that's the case. That's why I have it as a green lit tier. We re-sign Ugo Amadi or Lonnie Johnson Jr. And we go into the season with these uh, six safeties, then we'll be okay. But you can't improve and... That's what this video is for, to talk about why. You have Howden to replace Matthew or May. You really would like another younger piece to come in that can be your starter eventually. If you resign Lonnie Johnson Jr. or Ugo Amadi, you're going to have great veteran depth, but necessarily you don't want to start any of these games with Jonathan Abram or with Lonnie Johnson Jr. So I think it's a, it's a highlight, a position of, of need to be highlighted. It's just not a glaring need, but we can get better. So basically, if you're going to draft, if you're going to address safety, I think you should re-sign Lonnie Johnson, re-sign Ugo Amadi. And then if the right player falls in the draft to you, and you go ahead and take them. And, and, you know, if Dennis Allen puts his finger on one of these safeties and says, yeah, that's a guy we want, then I'm going to think it's a pretty good pick. That's one thing I can say about Dennis Allen. He knows his secondary players. All right, that's safety. Let's pull up the next green lit category, and that'll be tight end. I think tight end and running back are the next two here. And yeah, there's a, uh, this is, these are positions to look at with the tight ends. You've got Juwan Johnson, you've got Foster Morrow. So really what you want, and you, you got a couple of guys in Hudson and Jacobson that are practice squad guys. So what you really want is another body. I mean, you would like to improve on Juwan Johnson, sure. I would like to draft a tight end that can come in, run block and receive, and be a better player than Juwan Johnson. But the... Uh, Draft doesn't really hold a lot of players there. I give the draft grade for tight ends a D. You just don't have a lot of players to choose from. There's only one tight end that's going to go in the top 50. He might go in the top 10, and he's a great tight end prospect. If he falls to the Saints at 14, I'm talking about Brock Bowers, tight end from Georgia. He falls to the Saints at 14. Wouldn't shock me that, that we take him because he's such a dominant player. But after Bowers, you got a ways to go. He's the only guy I, I see being taken in the first 50 picks. You might have three tight ends total taken in the first three rounds, the top 100. Might have three taken. And I think in the top 200, you'll have maybe nine tight ends taken total. So you've got bodies to choose from. But we're talking about fifth round pick, sixth round pick, seventh round pick. And do they come in and light the world on fire? Probably not. It is something to look at, though. Free agent Jimmy Graham is not going to be re-signed, I'm pretty sure. I don't want to re-sign him because this coaching staff doesn't really know how to use him. <laughs> Keep him inactive half the games and then... You know, you didn't start using him in the red zone until halfway through the season. So are the Saints going to sign a tight end who can play special teams and be active more? They're going to try to go back to another veteran, someone like Morrow in a regular free agency. Go get another veteran guy and then hope that Jawan Johnson gets better. It's going to be real hard to address tight end adequately in this draft. I don't think you go and get a big name guy in free agency. So it's a need. And if we, we grab a draft pick late or if we get like a rookie free agent tied in and someone that can come in here and compete with these bottom dwellers on our roster right here. I mean, ideally, I would love for somebody to, to come in and, and be our number two. If Jawan Johnson's running around, limping around again, you know, can be elevated to number one. We we had to we had to play Foster as our number one tight end quite a bit this year, and overall I would say our tight end production was down. But it's going to be hard to address it. It's going to be hard to fix it. So it's, it's a bad draft class. 
And uh, I don't want the Saints to overpay in free agency. That's your breakdown of tight end. Now let's pull up the running backs. Similar situation here, highlighted green. We have bodies on the roster. Alvin Kamara, Jamal Williams, Kendra Miller, James Robinson, and Jordan Mims. You go into the season, you go into the regular season with this crew, I think you're just as good as you were this year, for sure. I mean, we haven't seen what James Robinson or Jordan Mims can do, but, you know, you, you had Tony Jones Jr. for a minute, and then you had uh, Daryl Williams for a minute. And the Saints showed, you know, they'll go and grab anybody out of free agency at any moment and bring them in. And, you know, lots of veteran running backs that can come in and maybe pick up a, a blitz, a blitzer or something like that. Enough veteran experience that they can come in and, and you know, be our number two or number three in a pinch. But it would be nice to have the future. Alvin Kamara is not going to be here forever. Kendra Miller would be the future because I think he looks great when he's healthy. But can he stay healthy? Jamal Williams, I think he's a decent player, but we didn't get a lot out of him this past year. Didn't look very promising. I know we have him a couple of more years under contract. So the way to go here is you address running back in free agency by getting like another cheap guy, cheaper than Williams. And he comes in and he just performs better than Williams. That's an option. Alvin Kamara, I doubt you get rid of him. I doubt you trade him or anything like that. He's too expensive. He's too old to get rid of like that. What you might get a fourth round pick if you trade him. And then you're, you know, you're gonna get like a thirty million dollar cap hit. So we probably go into the season with Alvin Kamara, Jamal Williams, Kendra Miller. And so if something happens in the draft and you're able to pick up a body, the Saints are really good at undrafted running backs. They just have this tendency of putting them on the practice squad and have, having some other team swoop them up. But yeah, there's a chance you address this through the draft. I give the running bay, the running back draft grade a C. None of them should be taken in the first 50 picks. Might have one or two go in the second round. I think six of them will go in the top 100, though. So none of them in the first two rounds, probably. But then in the next two rounds, the third round and the fourth round, you'll probably see about six of them go. I think there's 10 running backs that'll be taken in the top 150, six in the top 100, and then, you know, four more. So there are good options here. I've got a, a few of my favorites right now. Part of the video series I do this offseason will include breaking down the draft and we're going to rank them according to uh, the consensus rankings. And then I'll talk about my favorites and why I think they would be good fits for the Saints. So that are videos to look forward to. Like I say, we're going to break down these drafts for sure. But for right now, you know, if you get a running back in the draft, he's going to have to be of great value to you if you get him early in the third round, fourth round. But I think there's enough bodies here where you can address it late or through the rookie free agency, or you can address it through regular free agency. And, uh, and we'll be okay at running back. I mean, the thing is, Williams let us down. The production there is just not impressive at all. And Kendra Miller was hurt. If Kendra Miller stays healthy and you tell me I'm going into every game with Alvin Kamara and Kendra Miller for sure, I'm not worried about running back. That's why I have it highlighted green. Eno Benjamin is the only free agent. Not sure if we re-sign him. If we do, it'll be cheap. That's what I'm talking about. A veteran who can come in who will be cheaper than Jamal Williams, and we'll see if Eno Benjamin can beat out Jamal Williams. That kind of thing. All right, that's running backs. Now we're going to talk about the other three green highlighted positions. But there are also positions that I'm highlighting as yellow as well. First of all, I'll mention punter. It is what it is. 
Punter is what it is. I think we're going to try to keep going with the guy we have, Headley. But we'll see. All right. Uh, positions of need. Let's do linebacker first. This is a green position and a yellow position. The green meaning we need a good piece. We need a good piece at the back, like a, as a backup. We have great starters in Davis and Werner. But we need a starting Sam, and that's that's the yellow part of this. We need a starting Sam. We don't play Sam linebacker a lot, but we need a starter. But we also need, and why I have it highlighted green as well, we also need a, a good depth piece. I'm not excited about the depth here at linebacker. It's all young players. They've all shown that a few of them have shown that they can come in and play spot duty. It would just be really nice to have that number four linebacker that we can count on to come in and play at the will or in the middle. Our, our linebackers right now, Demario Davis, Pete Werner, great. You got Nephi Sewell and DeMarco Jackson. Those guys can play multiple positions. They're good special teamers. And they're showing that, that they're pretty active when they're on the field. They're just young. They're both on, you know, they're both, well, Jackson's a fifth round pick. Sewell's undrafted. You just, you feel like you could get better there. Even though we have pieces and, and the future is yet to be seen with these guys. You've also got Anthony Orgy, who was on the practice squad all year. You got Ryan Connolly, who's a good special teamer, and he can play multiple positions on the linebacking core. And we've also got Monty Rice, who we haven't seen much of yet. We've only had him for a couple of games before the season ended. So lots of bodies at linebacker. Our free agents, Zach Bond, who is our starting Sam. Then you've got Ty Summers and Andrew Dow. And Ty Summers can play all across the board, as well as Andrew Dow. Both of them are great special teamers. So, yeah, I think worst case scenario for the linebackers, we go in as is, and you're trying to figure out who your Sam is. If you re-sign Bond, he's not the greatest Sam. Bond, to me, is a spot player on defensive end. He can play linebacker for you in a pinch. Like I said, we go nickel and dime more than we go for three with that third linebacker out there. But you re-sign Bond, you get him for cheap. He can play two different positions. And all of a sudden, linebacker is not that great of a need. But you want to improve. And having a number four guy. Somebody that's come in and play in a pinch, you know, somebody, if somebody gets hurt, somebody that you can count on to come in, is that Nepi Sewell? Is that DeMarco Jackson? Can that be Andrew Dow or Ty Summers or Ryan Connolly? We want to see a lot from Anthony Orgy. He could be that Sam for us if he progresses. So there you go. The draft grade for linebacker to me is pretty low, C minus. I think you're only going to get five of them in the top 100. None of them in the top 50. So linebacker gets addressed. It'll be late second round into the third round. And then you might have five players taken in the third round or fourth round. Those will be the best linebackers on the board. Probably 10, player, 10 linebackers drafted in the top 150. 10 in the top 150, but only 5 in the top 100, and none in the top 50. So if you have a favorite linebacker in the draft, um, chances are, you know, there's questions. Uh, so we'll see how that works. Sorry about that. Hey, you switched places. Sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, so linebacker, there you go. Uh, that's your options. You know, I think you... Uh, if you can find a guy, a veteran, who can come in and be a way better on-field player than these backups here, um, you go ahead and grab one. If you can grab one in the draft, and there are a few in the draft that I really like. You're just not going to get one 
early, but you can get one in the third or fourth round if the Saints acquire third and fourth round picks. You can get a linebacker that's that's going to be better than these backups in the draft. It's possible. And in free agency. So that is your highlighted position, like I said, going into yellow because you need a starting Sam. And then green as well because I would really like to have a fourth linebacker that we can depend on. So you're kind of looking for a number three and number four linebacker. But it's not a horrible screaming need just yet. I have faith in Jackson and definitely Nephi Sewell. I really like Ryan Connolly and Ty Summers and Andrew Dow. So we we can address linebacker and we can we can probably do we can probably improve this team at linebacker. Any number of ways. Okay, next next let's put pull up defensive tackle. I've got that highlighted green and yellow. Yeah, we're no good against the run, and we can't rush the passer. So your defensive tackles are Colin Saunders, Nathan Shepard. Then you have Brian Brissy, who's going to be our stud. And then you've got a bunch of backups here. Jack Heflin, John Penicini, and Penicini, and DJ Mustafer. And you've got the free agent Malcolm Roach. I would love to get Malcolm Roach back. I think he would be a great number four. And then you would have Saunders, Shepard, Brissett, and Roach. Same guys you had going in the last year. Like I said, we're no good rushing the passer. And we're not very good at stopping the run. So, do you draft another pass rushing defensive tackle? That's my question. You pass, if you draft a pass rusher at defensive tackle, somebody who's more of like a three tech like Brissy, then you're kind of double dipping. If you get a guy who can play that five tech, I like I just call it nose. If you if you if you get a guy who's big enough to play the nose but active enough to rush the passer, a guy like uh, Onyemata for starters. There's a few players in the draft this year that are comp to Onyemata that type. Not 330 pounds, but he's not 280 either. He's 300, 310, 315, and who's strong enough to play that big defensive tackle spot next to Brissy. Those guys interest me, and then the big guy, the 320, 330 guy, interests me as well. If you get another pass rusher at defensive tackle, he's not going to be out there every down, he and Brissy. You know what I mean? So if you draft, defensive tackle high, and he's not a true nose, you would hope he can hold up in the middle and be out there for more than just passing downs. You can't go and draft another pass rushing three-tech defensive tackle and think you've done something and then put two pass rushers out there on early downs and get run on all the time. Then again, you don't want to get a big defensive tackle that's only good against the run and have to pull them out every time you're rushing the passer. But we do have pieces at defensive end that can bounce inside. And if we're rushing the passer from the middle, we have options there besides another true pass-rushing defensive tackle. I highlight that as green, meaning depth at defensive tackle, and we do need to get better at rushing the passer. So that's why I highlight it as green, if you go and get another pass rusher from in the middle of the defensive line, I'm fine with it, but it's got to be good value. The yellow highlight for me at defensive tackle would be getting a guy that can help stop the run. You get like a tween or somebody like Rook or 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 I can't pronounce his name, but if you get a guy like that in the draft, he can be on Yamada. So he can play all three downs and you might get good run stopping and good pass rushing from the same cat. Now that would be good, but I'm going to say position of need because you want better pass rushers. You can always get better at the defensive line, but I don't like just drafting a pure pass rusher and thinking he's going to play on first and second down next to Brissy. Brissy's not good enough against the run yet. So that's how I have 
the caveats for defensive tackle. I grade the draft at defensive tackle at a B. It's pretty good. You're going to have five players taken in the top 50. So five players will go in the first two rounds. You're going to have 14 taken in the top 100. So 14 players total in the top 100 for defensive tackle. There are a lot of bodies to choose from. A lot of great players. A lot of them that can fit in for the Saints. You know, the bigger types, uh, uh, the nose tackle types, there's, there's three or four of them here. There's one you can get in the second round, maybe late first, second round. There's another guy you can get in the third round or fourth round, a couple of them. And then there's a couple you can take a chance on later on. But I would really love to get another big defensive tackle. That's why I highlight this yellow, because I think that's what we need help at. You've already got Brissette. You've got pieces like Tano Passigno that can come bounce in from end. And Nathan Shepard, you know, he had three and a half sacks. He's a good player. He's a veteran. So, you know, if, you're, if your three-tech is Shepard and Brissi all year long, I think you're okay with Tano coming in. And if you re-sign Malcolm Roach, and he can play both, both positions in the middle of the defensive line, you know, you'll, you'll have a lot of good pieces there. So I don't think it's a screaming need to, to try to go get a pass-rushing defensive tackle and think that that's going to cure everything. He's going to have to be stout against the run. I don't think we're good enough against the run. Now, Colin Saunders, he's okay. Our numbers weren't good versus the run. That's my issue. So if you're going to get a defensive tackle in this draft, and you should, you might want to get two of them. You just got to make sure it's the right player. Make sure it's the right value. If you can get Byron Murphy out of Texas, <laughs> if you grab him with the 14th pick, I'm going to be mad because we have Brian Brissy already. I don't know if him and Brissy would play in the middle of the defensive line for the majority of a game. But if you get Byron Murphy in the second round, I'm not going to be too mad at it. <laughs> So that's that's what I'm talking about here with, with defensive tackle. All right. One other play, one other position that we're going to double up on here, wide receiver. I have it as green and as yellow. Green because we don't really have the bodies. We only have two players under contract right now. Chris Olave, A.T. Perry. Our free agents are Michael Thomas, Rashid Shaheed, Lynn Bowden Jr., and Keith Kirkwood. The draft grade at wide receiver I have is an A minus. And I believe that is the highest rated position. Wide receiver to me in the draft, wide receiver and offensive tackle are the best uh, the best positions in the draft. As far as depth, as far as, you know, the amount of people, all of that. So at wide receiver, draft grade of A minus, 11 players at wide receiver will be drafted in the first 50 picks. That's insane. This first round may have as many as seven or eight. I think the first round is going to have no less than five. I'm going to say the, the first round is going to have six receivers taken. But you have 11 of them that are supposed to go in the top two rounds. You have 19 of them that can go in the top 100. 19. It's a really good wide receiving class. Matter of fact, I think in the top 150, you'll have 23 wide receivers taken in the top 150. That is a huge chunk. But, I mean, these wide receivers are all pretty good. And you have a glaring need here. It's a green highlight because you only have two bodies on the roster. Now, you're going to re-sign Rashid Shaheed, so you're going to have three. And those three are pretty good. But I highlight green for wide receiver because I think you can get better after that, way better. I mean, Rashid Shaheed's an undrafted guy. I know him and Chris Olave sound like the great wide receiving duo, but I don't see Rashid out there 
playing every every snap at wide receiver. Well, you have A.T. Perry, and he's kind of like your classic X, and he's going to be Michael Thomas's replacement. Well, he only had 12 catches last year, four touchdowns, but he's so young, and he's a six-round pick. I know you can get better at wide receiver. You can definitely get better at depth. And that's why I highlighted green. I think as far as the free agents go, you let Thomas go. You you re-sign Shaheed. As a matter of fact, I shouldn't even have him on the free agent list because I'm so confident we're going to re-sign him. So you have Alave, Perry, and Rasheed. I think you re-sign Lynn Bowden just to have a little depth. And in the green highlight here is no, you need you need better depth than Lynn Bowden Jr., then I think you can get it. Same thing with Keith Kirkwood. Yeah, you bring you bring those guys back because they know the system and everything, but when it's all said and done and the season's starting, do you really want Keith Kirkwood and Lynn Bowden Jr. to be your number four, number five wide receiver? Yeah, I don't think so. That's why it's highlighted in green, also highlighted in yellow. Because Michael Thomas was a starter and he needs to be replaced. He's not going to be replaced by Rashid Shaheed. You got a good core here with Alave Perry and Shaheed, but you need depth. If Lynn Bowden Jr. and Keith Kirkwood are on our practice squad, okay, and you you draft a couple of guys or acquire a veteran in free agency and then draft another guy, that's the only way I'm going to be happy with wide receiver. It's a it's a yellow highlighted position for me. Uh, in the in the most important way, to go and get a stud, a guy that's going to be a true number one. I love Chris Olave, and he is a number one receiver in this league, but he's not an X wide receiver. He's not a yards after catch wide receiver, and he's not going to out muscle anybody. So that's what I got here. Personally, what I think you should do: you get Shahid back, you re-sign Lynn Bowden. That gives you four. Then you go get a veteran in free agency that can be a starter opposite Alave for half the time, you know. And uh, A.T. Perry can be in there the other half the time. And then I still think you need to draft one. And whether that's a big or whether that's a yak guy, it's really up to you. I would prefer drafting a big guy because I think A.T. Perry's going to be just okay. I'm looking at A.T. Perry as a really good number four the backup X to whoever we can get in this draft. That's the way I look at it. Or if you get a veteran in free agency and he's a solid guy, a guy who's going to start, I don't want to spend a lot of money on a wide receiver. I don't want to go get a $20 million guy. But, you know, if you spend six, seven, eight million million on a, a true starter, a guy that's going to come in and be the number one guy opposite Chris Olave. You know, that'll be that'll be a fine move. Still think you need to address it in the draft. Too many good players in the draft. And this reminds me of the tight end class last year. Too many good players at wide receiver this year to not get at least one. All right, that's your green highlighted players bleeding into yellow. And now we've already talked about for the yellow tier, we've already talked about linebacker. Defensive tackle, cornerback, and wide receiver. Let's talk about quarterback real quick. Derek Carr, Taysom Hill, Jake Hayner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. We need a guy. We need a backup. I know everyone wants the future, but Derek Carr is our starter for at least this year. If he gets hurt, I would like a veteran to come in and take his place for a couple of games. So I want the kind of situation we had before. Jameis Winston, somebody like that. A free agent. Not Jameis Winston. Yeah, I don't I don't care. I don't care who it is. I mean, as long as it's a veteran with experience that can come in and play for you in a pinch. We did that two years ago. <laughs> Excuse me. With Andy Dalton. And uh, he ended up having to start the whole season. So that's why everybody doesn't like Andy Dalton, because he ended up having to start him. But I wouldn't mind grabbing an Andy Dalton like that again, you know, in case Carr gets hurt and you need a veteran. Hey, maybe Jake Hayner shows us something this year. 
Maybe the Saints draft somebody late who can develop and compete with Hayner. And maybe when it's all said and done, you, if you draft a, a guy late and you have Hill and Hayner, then you're okay and you don't have to go in free agency. I'm leaning more towards a free agent. Unless there's a quarterback there, and you know we said this last year, the quarterback was Jake Hayner that the Saints liked. They went and got him. And this will be his second year coming up, and we'll see We'll see how far he progresses. But draft grade at quarterback, I have a C. I don't think you have these great players coming out, but you have players that have potential. You know, everyone knows who your top three quarterbacks are, and then you're taking a chance after that. Bo Nix, J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix. They're all late first, second round projections. And then after that, you're, you're taking a chance. You might have six quarterbacks taken in the top 50, probably only eight taken in the top 100. And then we're talking about Michael Pratt out of Tulane, uh, Spencer Rattler out of South Carolina. You know, maybe maybe the Saints see something in the, the Senior Bowl this week with those guys, and then they want to take a you know shot at them in the fourth round or third round. Whew. But uh, yeah, you're taking a chance either way. No one's no one's jumping off the page to me outside of those top three picks. So, quarterback, you'll have six taken in the first two rounds when it's all said and done. And then, you know, if you want to mess with the kid from Florida State or the kid from Tennessee in the later rounds, you can do that. You can bring one of those guys in to compete with Hayner to be the backup. You'll still have a kind of a veteran quarterback in Hill. We may be trading Hill. I think Hill's going to end up in Denver. <laughs> I think Sean Payton's going to trade us a future fourth-round pick for Taysom Hill. Anyway, we'll see. Quarterback is a need, though. If the right guy falls to you at the right place and you think he might be the future, go ahead and grab him because we know we're moving away from Carr eventually. But we have very limited draft picks this year and very limited amount of money to address anything in free agency. I don't think you resign Winston. You either go for a cheap veteran as a backup this year and then look at the draft later. Or you can look at the draft this year. The right one falls to you at the right spot. Or you take a chance on someone late. That's your position. That's your situation at the quarterback position. Now we're going to talk about the red alerts. Red alert, red alert, red alert. Five positions here. Everybody wants to say offensive tackle. I'm going to say, no, we need a left tackle and a right tackle. We need a left guard. We could also use a backup guard. We need a nickel cornerback in the worst way. And uh, we would love to have the future at defensive end. At the very least, someone who can play a lot of snaps. I think, I think Saints fans, we're going to look at defensive end first. I think Saints fans want an edge rusher, someone that's going to get 12, 10, 12 sacks. Well, if he can play on the defensive line and get 10, 12 sacks a year, that's great. I'll draft him right now. Jared Verse, Dallas Turner, Le, uh, Leatu Latu, that's your top three edge rushers in the draft. Yeah, those guys aren't big enough to play against the run on the defensive line. So if you draft those guys, you don't really have an early down guy unless you bulk them up and they show much improvement against the run. Uh, if you go and grab a bulky guy at defensive end, then you're not going to have the pass rusher you're looking for. So our Saints roster, Cameron Jordan, Carl Granderson, Peyton Turner, Tano Passanio, Isaiah Foskey, Nico Lelos. Our free agents are Zach Bond, Kyle Phillips. You re-sign Kyle Phillips, put him on the practice squad. Cheap, no problem. Zach Bond, I don't think any other team's wanting him for more than $3 million a year. 
Do we want that? Do we want to sign Vaughn again? Three to four million a year, I would do it if you utilize him better at defensive end on third downs. You have him as your starting Sam, and then you put him on the defensive end on third down. That means pulling Jordan out of the game on third down, putting Zach Vaughn at the end. You make that move, and you're, you're, you'll be okay at defensive end, I think. I'm still not sold against the run, and that's Cameron Jordan, okay? Carl Granderson's not going anywhere. Granderson's your starter. You're looking for somebody opposite Granderson at this point. Cam Jordan gets on one of those routines like DeMario Davis, and he finds the fountain of youth, and he can just be a decent player. You know, then then maybe he'll play the run well and we'll be good at ends on early downs. But you want to pass rusher on third down. So Peyton Turner, if he stays healthy, he'll be an option. Isaiah Foskey's a second round pick. He is the option. I don't think we're getting rid of Foskey anytime soon. I think we're gonna to try to make that work. So you guys wanting an edge rusher, the Saints may just grab Zach Bond and rely heavily on Turner and Foskey. Your edge rusher is going to be Foskey or Bond or Turner. <laughs> now, I don't trust Turner's going to stay healthy. You have Cameron Jordan, who I think we need to upgrade from. You get an edge rusher in the draft. I give a uh, edge rusher a B- minus in this draft. Six of them are going to go in the top 50. Probably 11 of them in the top 100. But of all of those 11 edge rushers, only two of them are over 270 pounds. So if you get an edge rusher, and I like to say defensive end, if you get a defensive end, he's going to be a small guy, and you hope you get the guy that can play early downs well against the run. Or if he's really light, you hope he can play off ball a little bit. You want to grab a guy to just come in and rush the passer on third downs? You want, really want to spend an early draft pick on that? Like I said, if he's if you know he can get to the quarterback 10, 12 times, you go ahead and draft him. I just don't know how you fix the run and the pass at the same time on this defensive line without very, very special players. So good luck addressing that in the draft. I am terrified of small edge rushers because I still want to I still want to defend the run. Yeah, I'm leaning more towards you get born back. You have pieces on third down to rush the passer, whether it's Foskey, Turner, or Bourne. And then you can you can kick K pass into the middle. And, uh, you know, there were games when we were very productive rushing the passer. Uh, it all depends on the offensive line we were going up against. As it stands, our defensive line is just not that good. And in order to improve, we're going to have to grab massively talented players. And y'all subscribe to Rosenfield 10 when I break down these positions in the draft. And we'll talk about each player and, and what I think they can bring to the Saints. But I would say out of the top five needs here, defensive end is the last one. And it's just because of the situation. Hey, if Peyton Turner stays healthy, you have your edge rusher. If Isaiah Foskey turns a corner, you have an edge rusher. If you re-sign Zach Bond and he's utilized properly, you may have an edge rusher. So it's not, it's not like we're desperate, but we are desperate. Because all of those players can be improved upon. Maybe not Peyton Turner. A first-round draft pick? When healthy, he looks really good. I don't know if you can improve on a healthy Peyton Turner. Unless you go really early in the draft. God, that's your, that's your, that's your situation. Does Turner stay healthy? All right, next one. We're going to talk about nickel cornerback. <clears throat> Bringing up the cornerbacks again. This time, I'm only highlighting the nickels here. Alante Taylor's your starter right now, and you want him on the outside. 
You got Fayon Hicks and Reg Zahn Wright. I have no idea what those guys bring. I have no idea if those are outside guys or nickel, or potential nickel guys. I don't know. I know that I don't know who they are, and uh, and we're going to have to see them in preseason to even know what kind of role they can play. Um, yeah, I'll mention Shemar Jean Charles, too. You know, he uh exclusive rights free agent that we have. I have no idea what he can bring to the table. But your true free agent, Nickel, is Ugo Amadi. And I think he's a desperate re-sign. Because you don't want Taylor at Nickel anymore. You want him on the outside. Especially if we're going to trade Marshawn Lattimore. So, I think you get Ugo Amadi back for Nickel. And uh, as far as the draft goes, I have a B-plus grade for the cornerbacks. And we looked at the outside cornerbacks before and mentioned the depth there. But here I'm just going to talk about nickel. There's probably six six guys in the draft that are projected to be nickel, probably more so nickel than on the outside or at safety. They kind of project as nickel. There's six of them. Now, like I said, the, the the depth of cornerbacks, great. And if you envision one of those guys playing nickel, fine. Like a guy like Cooper DeJean, for starters, who uh, is going to be a first-round pick. He would make a perfect nickel. You're not going to gra grab him just to play nickel. You could. He can play outside and, and uh, safety as well. But there are really about six guys that are true nickels that are going to come in and definitely be your nickel. Only four of them are going to go in the top 100. And like I said, after that, you know, if you have six nickel options, you also have lots of options at cornerback, and you just hope that they transition the nickel, kind of like Alante. He shows that he can play it, and then you put him out there, and, you know, hey, if we keep uh, Alante Taylor at nickel, he's probably going to get pretty good. He'll probably be even better this year, and by, the, you know, the third year he's at nickel, he's, he might be one of the best in the league, but... He's really good on the outside. I'm saying for nickel, you re-sign Ugo Amadi and you address that in a major way. You go get a top-notch nickel in free agency to be your starter ahead of Ugo Amadi. And then you still leave the door open. Like I said, cornerback's a guy a, a position you gotta draft probably you gotta address probably twice. You need a backup outside. That's going to be Isaac Yadam. Hopefully, you re-sign Isaac Yadam. You'll have your backup outside. You keep Marshawn Lattimore, you're good. You trade Marshawn Lattimore, as long as you re-sign Yadam, you're good on the outside. Maybe draft, draft an outside guy late. There's so many cornerbacks in this draft. It'd be a crime to get out of this draft without a cornerback as well. And maybe you address that late. A good guy that's an outside guy. Someone that can beat out right or Fayon. But as far as the nickel in the draft, yes, four of them in the top 100. So if you're going to draft a nickel back, it's going to have to be a specific guy, and you're going to have to be able to grab them. Do you reach and you grab that nickel in the second round? You're going to have to acquire picks if you want a third rounder or a fourth rounder. Whole other tragedy with the Saints there. I'm going to mention my favorites in the draft as far as Nickelback goes right now. Mike Sandristill out of Michigan. He's the number one guy. He's probably going to go in the second round. I would love to get him in the third round. Oh, if we could get him in the third round, Nickel would be, we'd be set. Because I think he projects as the best Nickel. You can also look at Johnny Dixon out of Penn State. Chris Abrams Drain out of Missouri. Max Melton, a safety out of Rutgers. Tyke Smith, a safety out of Georgia. Jerry and Jones, cornerback out of Florida State. I said them. There you go. Those are your, in my opinion, top six nickelbacks in the draft. And uh, huge position to need for the Saints. Okay, we're going on to left guard. Massive, massive need. Oh, yeah, you're going into this season with your starters here. Uh, you've got Cesar Ruiz on the right side. 
But on the left side, right now, your starter is Tommy Kramer or Nick Saldaveri. You've got Colby Gossett, who's a backup right tackle right now. I mean, a right guard right now. We just got him. I have no idea who he is. So, yeah, that's your guards. Who's going to start at left guard? Tommy Kramer? Okay, so your free agents for the Saints. James Hurst, Max Garcia, Trey Turner. I should also mention Andres Pete. If you resign James Hurst or Andres Pete, you have a left tackle and a left guard. So, I think you should resign both of them. I don't want to resign Andres Pete to a lot of money. When he took a pay cut this year, I think his salary dropped to six million, somewhere between four and six million. And now that he's played tackle for a whole year, he's probably wanting ten million or something like that. I would offer that man two years, ten million. If he don't like it, maybe go up to six million a year. But that he took a pay cut to stay here. And I wouldn't pay him much more than where we had him at that pay cut. Now, if another team's desperate for a tackle and really want to take a chance on this injury-prone, mediocre tackle, then they can go ahead because Andres Pete does provide versatility to play tackle or guard. I just don't want to overpay for Andres Pete. <laughs> Two, three years ago, I would have told you, get rid of him, please. And now we're sitting here so desperate to tackle and guard that we're talking about how much are we going to spend to keep Andres Pete. Well, I think you can get James Hurst for pretty cheap. I think you sign him for a couple more years. And then you have yourself a starter, whether <laughs> I don't want to, but you need a backup. So hopefully you can get, in my opinion, you re-sign Andres Pete, two years, 12 million. Have him play left tackle. You re-sign James Hurst. You have him be your primary left guard. Backup left guard, left tackle. You also have a guy named Billy Price. I have no idea who that is. Uh, my draft grade for guards in this draft is a B, a solid straight up B. Only two guards are going to be drafted in the top 50, probably. But you have a couple of tackle prospects who, who may switch to guard. You have a couple of center prospects who could play at guard. But two, two true guards in the top 50. Um, interior, I would, I would rather say interior offensive linemen, three of the top five are centers. So if you're talking interior offensive line, you're going to be drafting a center and hoping he can play guard unless you get the two that I like in the top 50. And there are other ones who are projected either tackle or guard who project to be good guards. You have your options at those two. All together in the top 100, probably nine interior offensive linemen will be taken. And I think this is a position that the Saints should address in the draft big time. You go ahead and re-sign Pete and Hurst because you need them. But you need to improve at both of those. If you can only get one, I say get Hurst and go in hard in the draft on both left tackle and left guard. That's my situation right here. And in most of these mock drafts that I've done, I've taken offensive tackle and offensive guard in the first two rounds because I think that's that's where we lack most. <laughs> you think you think guard's just okay till you look at that roster right there and then you realize you might have to pay Pete over ten million a year, a guy you didn't want anyway. Go ahead and grab Hurst. Grab Pete if you can for cheap. Grab both of them if you can. But you got to improve at both of them. And, uh, yeah, that's a red alert position of need. And now your final position of need, offensive tackle. And, yeah, you need two of them. We'll touch on right tackle real quick. Ryan Ramchek's a great starter. He's a pro bowler if he's not hurt. He's going to be on the injury report every week for the rest of his career. He's going to have those veteran off days. And you're never going to know if he's available when the game starts. So, yeah, if you can get a right tackle, the right tackle of the future, you do it. And in this draft, there's a ton of them. I give a tackle a grade of A-. minus. It's really good, really good depth. 
really good versatility pieces. You know, there's a lot of guys here and you're not quite sure where they fit. A lot of guys that have issues with certain things, but you think you can coach it out of them. But just a lot of guys with a lot of talent. And I'm here to say A minus, besides wide receiver, best position in the draft. You're going to have 10 offensive tackles taken in the top 50. And I'm assuming probably six in the first round. So 10 of them taken in the top 50, 12 of them taken in the top 100. I think as far as these 12 players, 12 tackles taken in the top 100 in the draft, I'm going to say four of them are true left tackles. Five of them are true right tackles. Two of them are swing tackles, and one of them projects to be a guard. So you got four true left tackles, two of them, the best two on the board. They'll be gone by the time the Saints pick at 14. Then you got two more left tackles, but those are more late first, early second rounders. So do you grab a left tackle as a reach at 14 with one of those true left tackles that's left on the board? Or do you grab one of the top five right tackles who are all great, but they would have to project to the left side? That's your situation here with the tackle. And I show a right tackle here real quick. James Hurst, Cameron Irving. You can re-sign either one of them. I like Irving. I think you re-sign him. I'd much rather him as a backup than Landon Young, who you have on the roster along with Mark Evans the third. So your situation at right tackle, let's bring up left tackle. And this is your final one. Your starter right now is Trevor Penning. That's not going to happen. Landon Young. If the season started today, the Saints would start Landon Young at left tackle. Ugh, come on. This is, this is red, red alert on an epic scale. Not only do we need a starting left tackle, we need the tackle of the future. If you re-sign Andres Pete or James Hurst, you can make it through a season at left tackle, but you're not going to be very good. And tackle in this draft is, is so good, so deep, so many options. You can trade up and grab one of the best two. You can trade back and still grab a good one in the, late in the first round. You're going to be grabbing good tackles in the second round. I really like the tackle class in this draft, and we need two of them. So, all right, that's the video, guys. Uh, subscribe to Rosenfield 10. I will be doing a complete breakdown of the draft and these positions, and we'll talk about the players available there. I also will be doing videos about free agency when those become more clear. And... Uh, until then, I'll talk to you later. Who dat?